What's up everybody, Michael here, and today we're gonna have a look at the Forza 720 that was literally just announced by Nanlite. It's the most powerful light of the Forza series rated at 800 watts. For everyone who has already worked with, let's say, a Forza 300 or 500, this light will feel very familiar. But the Forza 720 is a bit more than just more output. There are a lot of small details and clever adjustments to the design of the 720 that make it stand out. And as you can see, this is an absolute unit. The fixture together with the yoke without the reflector weighs about 4,622 grams. You have a bigger COB in the front than let's say on a 300 or 500, but they managed to keep everything tied together in a balance mount factor. And I think that's really good because there is a lot of accessories for this particular mount. Everything is mounted on the yoke and you can adjust the tilt with a single kip handle here. Pretty convenient, pretty easy. So far so good, right? But when we have a look at the control unit, this design actually alters from the 300 and 500 of the Forza series. The batteries here I have two juicy 270 watt hour 26 volts from FX line. They mount on the side now instead of inside of the controller unit. Just like that. One. And... Two. On the top, you have DMX out, DMX in, on off, a nice little display, two knobs to control everything, and four knobs to set different settings. On the back of the controller unit, you have a new quick release mount. You can just take it off and put it back in. It was really easy. And it clicks and gives a satisfying sound, letting you know that everything is locked in safely. Now, the Forza 720 has a ton of light output, and it has the usual built-in effects, you know, like uh, paparazzi, bad bulb, and a really interesting one, which is called, let me get to it, it's called Falls. Okay, I don't want to be that guy, but Nanlite, I think you have a little typo in your menu system, at least at the version 0.02.09 that I'm currently running. The Forza 720 has all the standard connectivity options like DMX, 2.4G connectivity with an optional uh, transmitter box and a receiver, or, and that is my favorite, you control everything over the Nylink app, which I've really started to enjoy. Now for everyone wondering why this just didn't clip the whole picture when I turn up the fixture to 100%, that's because I'm doing this review with fan off, which gives you a maximum of 15% output. But you know what, let's turn it on real quick. Fan control, boom, and you can hear, there's a little bit of fan noise. And if you control it now. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on to what's probably most interesting for everybody, light quality and especially light output. And let's compare the Forza 720 to its competitor, which would naturally be the Aperture 600D. I measure both the Forza 720 and the Aperture 600D in the exact same settings, locations, and I use this Iconic 800C, so I think my numbers should be relevant. One thing you should notice though is that if you measure both lights, with the respective reflector on, you are not gonna get exact numbers because the hyper reflector on aperture creates a hotspot and that will result into higher light readings because the tighter the beam angle, the more light output. So taking this into the equation, I have also measured bare ball values so that the manufacturers can trick us reviewers using weird reflectors. And I also put the more evenly distributed nan light reflector on both fixtures, which should lead to comparable results. naturally, as everyone was expecting, the Forza 720 is much brighter than the 600D. That's because it runs at a higher wattage. Now things get a bit more interesting when you switch away from AC power to battery power. The Aperture 600D can go all the way up to 100% brightness using the same 26 volt batteries. However, the Nanlite Forza tops out at 70% when you use batteries. What this actually means is that this is showing the technological limitations of how much two 26 volt batteries can put out at the same time. But in reality, the Forza 720 with battery power at 70% is still brighter than the Aperture 600D at 100%. The light quality is stellar from both fixtures. And I think in this category of lights, we have hit a point where those COBs are really good and I don't think it matters what brand you choose. 
they're just all good. Fan noise is not too bad with either lights because I don't think you're gonna use these lights very close up when you shoot a talent with a microphone because this would just blind the talent. And even in a reasonable distance, I think the fan noise is something that you can hear in a dead silent environment, but it's nothing that you can't filter out in post-production. Another difference between the two fixtures is that the connector unit of the Aperture 600D is a lot bigger than this one from Nanlite. This really is no big deal in practice though, um, the Aperture 600D connector size-wise is just fine. What matters though is that the connecting points of the 600D unit are both on the top and on the bottom. And to be quite honest, I don't understand this design choice from Aperture because it makes resting the whole unit on the floor so much more inconvenient than the solution here from Nanlite, where you can just pop it off, put it on the floor like that, and there you go. Same goes for the quick release system on the connector unit. The design of Aperture is really good in theory, but the problem is if you're a bit in a hustle on set and you miss it, you can easily just drop it on your toes when you run away from the fixture. Now compare this to the quick release of Nanlite that has a slide in function and you either slide in or you don't. There's very little chance of misplacing the unit. And I think after like 8, 9, 10 hours on set, those are the tiny little details that matter. To come to a conclusion and the verdict from my side, I think Nanlite for now has won the boxing match between the two manufacturers when it comes to this fixture. Since the quality and features of both fixtures are pretty much the same, this quickly becomes all about output. So if you're in the market for a fixture with that amount of output, I think there is one distinct argument for the Aperture over the Forza 720 from Nanlite. It's the really solid ecosystem of Aperture. If you've already invested into Aperture lights and you don't mind less output, I think the 600D is still a great choice. Now if you're like me and you care more about performance than a particular brand, or you already bought yourself into the Nanlite ecosystem, I think the Forza 720 is the logical choice. It offers more bang for the buck with no real downside. The Forza 720 offers a lot for the price and is definitely a great choice, let's say if you're into super slow motion or you just need a fixture with a lot of output but you probably are not ready to commit on let's say an Evoque 1200 or an Aperture 1200D. If you like this video, it would mean a lot to me if you liked and subscribed. I think I'm almost at 1,000 subscribers. And left a comment below what you think about the Nanlite Forza 720, how you feel about it, and if it is a useful option for you. Until then, guys, keep creating, and I will see you in the next video. Cut!